Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Utter Act Dandy, a mono gotta re. Um, so, oh my goodness, we're back. We are back. Clap it up real quick for mono gotta re, okay? Finally back again, off season, monster season. What's about to happen? That's the big question. It's actually crazy because every other episode of mono gotta re I've seen, I watched either twice a week or once a week for like a year and a half or however long it took me. I don't even remember how long it took. But your boy was in the mono gotta re headspace for so long and then it ended and while I was finishing it they they announced this and now it's finally coming out a few months later so this is the first time I've had to wait for Monogatari and I know it's just a it's just an iota compared to the people waiting here like years and years and years uh but it, you know it's so crazy that like there's only one episode to watch and it's the newest episode that came out less than 24 hours ago so I'm really really excited um I did watch a trailer for this already that's already you know that's already up on the the channel check out the playlist description for all your monogatari needs uh because your boy did yap a lot about this show this is kind of my prime yapping show so you know take a bite out of that we're about to take a bite out of this pie um i'm i'm very curious what's gonna happen i think we're starting with onanoki stuff and tsukihi right but it's really hard to tell because well we haven't started yet but just look at this let me boom just look at this beautiful sight, bro. A chapter number. And look at these colors. I could talk about these colors, bro. For, for so ever. It's like, it almost, doesn't it almost look like fluffy ice cream? It's like Onanoki blue, bro. It's that on Onanoki like mint chocolate chip, bro. This is mint chocolate chip coloration, but <sighs> I'm excited. I hope y'all are excited too. We're just going to jump straight into this. This is a 32 minute episode. Um, So they're starting with a big one. Off season and monster season one is the title. <sighs> Back at it again. Let's just go in a three, a two, a one. Bang. Oh my goodness, they're starting with a realistic egg. That's so good already. I already love it. Okay. Written by Onanoki. Onanoki cook. Onanoki cook. The egg's good because bird, because phoenix. Dude, look at the lighting. Six months I started observing. Okay, that makes sense. Six months, big time thing. That's really cool. Look at the background where it's like all our shadows are forming into like... Oh, it formed into the kanji. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's super. Okay. Yeah, she even t was with uh, around with the Ogi stuff, remember? And, uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. You're talking about yourself being close to the nucleus, a a aka her, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good already. Episode 1 of Off and Monster Season. Winner! Bro, is there going to be a new OP and ED? Who's pulling up in the car? Who is it? <gasps> Aragi! Aragi! Oh, look at him with his long hair, bro. Cookie and cream. Delicious. Oh, I remember that from the trailer. The uh, I remember that being very specific. Like, a, re a repeating element. I love Aragi. The spin with the cookie on top. Shout out. That makes sense. That does make sense. At the time, she shared a room with Karen. One year older. But Karen's now high school, so she's got her own room. Okay. Wow, Karen's room looks like uh, Kompadu's room. Like, like, verbatim. <laughs> Dang, she got her own room. I guess uh, they kind of took the space that Araraki had. Oh, you saw her move? You're eating ice cream! Unanoki, your, your cover has been exposed. <laughs> Bro, it's like Toy Story. It's actually Toy Story right now. 
It's not you. What are you doing? Are you mopping it off with her? Wow, that's an interesting line. I actually like that line. Given his soul after he poured affection to it. That's a cool line. Come on, give me up. There it is. Damn. Wait, good point. The freeloading point? She just turned it back on her. Oh, no, no, he did. Okay. That shot of her on top of her got me... Never mind. That's a great shot. I love that shot. I used that, that shot of her doing that thing in my uh, thumbnail the other day. Love that. Let me just abuse the doll until it, like, proves that it's alive. That's actually kind of giga... Uh, like, giga brand. Right? Because if it doesn't feel pain, then you're not hurting it. If it does feel pain, then you're forcing a response. Oh, surprised you. Got you. What is that? Oil? Why are you oiling up Ononoki? <gasps> That's what the notch is for. She's crazy. Oh, that was cool. It made a seven, bro. Oh, that, I love that, dude. The freaking like heat camera. It's okay here. You're crazy, dude. You're gonna you're gonna burn your house down. Wow, you didn't. You ate it with the match. Oh no, okay. Are you crazy, dude? The lighting on her is so good. She's raining matches. You're even scarier. That was a cool shot. So chapter three. Oh, are you, is this the magical girl thing? Yeah. Oh, so I you possess the doll. Mm. Puella Magi Yotsuki Peace or something. It's a Madoka Magica. It's Madoka Magica in the back. That's funny. Shout out Madoka Magica. That was a great show. Bro, there's gonna be a new Madoka Magica movie. I just remembered. That's gonna be lit. For the first time? Hmm. She's talking about Tsukihi. That's, that's like, kind of ironic, right? That Tsukihi doesn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that was a slip. That was a... The corpse thing there. Dude, Ononoki looks- I love the, like, gleam on her hair. The weird- the weird birds is funny. In context, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of fire- fire- fire sister spirit kind of feel? Just a little bit. It's like vultures circling her a little bit. The music is killing me right now. This music is killing me. A misty <laughs> why she have a crowbar? <laughs> Ah, uh, Heroes of Justice. Cookie Mint Mint, Mint Chocolate Chip uh, World. That's like the, kind of looks like what uh, the beginning shot of the, the first chapter number. Hmm. 
<laughs> Don't try to. I'm trying to watch the show, man. Why are you in, in the Deco's room one minute later? That is so fast. Did you go there? <laughs> she just immediately goes to the Deco room. <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. Girl's just trying to work on her manga, bro. Let her cook. Yeah. Love the coloring there. The color palette. The pinks and the blue. The teal. <laughs> True. Never wash that off. True. Wow, good connection to Deco. Like, accidentally just connected correctly. Or bet. Why go to Nadeko right away? Oh my goodness, Onanoki's falling for her, Loki. <laughs> We're both in the Human Trade Apparition League. For me, as I'm not completely irreversibly an apparition. Oh, okay. That's fair. I'll support them until I need to, unless I need to kill them. Until I need to kill them. Dang, she got like a library, bro, of manga stuff. But yeah, so her connection to Oddity stuff, that could be a, a, a good reason to like help out. I get that. She's already in that world. She's already immersed. <gasps> She's hiding. I like cutting to the closet for that. That was clever. Ooh, this music. Don't talk about her feet. Sorry? Yeah, the little, the little question mark. Bike! 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 Sorry. <laughs> Bikes are traumatic for me with this show, bro. <laughs> they mean too much, bro. They mean too much. Aww. Oh, this is such a good shot. Kind of reminds me of Cowboy Bebop's OP a little bit. If this life is a show is letting her grow healthy, it's quite ironic. Well, shut in, sure, but she's working on something, right? That's so big. If you're doing like fulfilling work, even if you're alone, I think that's positive. Nadeko, keep cooking. Kaiki, shout out Kaiki, bro. Oh, dude, the like the framing to make it more retro because that art kind of had a retro feel with the OP. A slug tofu. Okay, oh, okay, I didn't know this, or if I if I was supposed to, I forgot. Because I don't think I don't remember that at all. Maybe she's just yapping, but she's probably being real. Oh, she, okay. She's using it to try to make her look like a magical girl so she can go back to being a doll because she said she'd stop being possessed once she be, does the thing. So she needs to slay a monster in front of Tsukihi. I see. Aww. Dude, they did the same thing again with the Kaiki where the, the resolution's different. I love that. Kaiki dollar, Kaiki dollar. Wait, how will you pull out? Okay, sorry, sound like a race. <laughs> Yo! No, not again. Oh, it's the it's literally the book! That's, that's literally it, the light novel right there. Actual Bakke Monogatari reference. Hilarious. Dude, it's crazy having, like, Onanoki as, like, a protagonist. In a sense, right? Manifest. Just go, um... Just think about Hachikuchi. 
without the shell. She basically becomes a slug. Bro, it, you are on the outside, Onanoki. You're not wiping it from the inside. Oh, it's her character design. It's Onanoki's character design. Oh, that was clean. Bro, they're cooking with the camera work and sick. No, oh, sitting next to each other. Ooh, ooh. Kicking the feet. I like this music. Itori slash Koi. True. Okay. Bro, this music is cooking right now. I'm freaking just jamming, bro. That box cutter is slightly worrying, but I'm just paranoid. Don't worry about it. What are you reading? Oh, wow. That's pretty big. Yeah, publishers are... How'd that go? 377 hits. One heart. Ouch. Happens to the best of us. Music though. True. That, that, that's very true. Well said on the Nookie. Aww. Ooh. Dang, Onanoki looks so good. Oh, they're not going to continue that. I would, I would have loved to hear more about that. That was a good line from um Nideko. Yeah, it hits with her context, especially. Oh, at the playground? Nice. Yo, Nideko, do you have a glaive? Or, um, Tsukihi, do you have a glaive? <laughs> Tsukihi, why do you have a glaive? Don't cut me! Dang, wait, she got moves! Yeah. That's a, a little bit ominous that it landed right where Onanoki was. What is it? Saw oh, for the slug fitting. <laughs> this friggin' ice cream wand is crazy. It's the NACL, right? Sodium chloride. Do sumo wrestlers do that now? I didn't. Oh, like that. Well, because like, the circle ring is that made out of salt sometimes? That's interesting. Oh, okay. Tell me. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm. I'm always a little scared of sandboxes because they make me think of like that thing with Hachikuji and Kayomi. That there's like a deeper issue underneath the surface level issue. Or like the surface level manifestation. Which feels kind of fitting because like... Tsukihi's giving a surface level thing for Tsukihi to like slay, right? Oh, 
about the world being hard or like life being hard. Yeah. Interesting. Bro, the colors are so pretty. Wait, this is cooking so hard. Hmm. It's like the difference between suffering and pain. If you can give meaning to it through like purpose, then it uh, no longer is suffering, it becomes pain. Which is better. Just <laughs> licking the salt. <laughs> You still call it I. That's interesting. Oh, Aragi! Or no, Shinobu was on that. Aragi slid under it. I know that life is fleeting and there's nothing in death. Okay, big line. Heroic narcissism. Good question, really good question. Giant slug monster time. No. Yeah, it's a giant slug monster! Oh, it's got like manga dotting on it. Like illustration dotting. She might see surprising success as a manga artist. Oh, oh, oh. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. Big Brother Kaiki, it's not hot hand, I only need one finger. Bah! Good shot. <laughs> no? Well, that's not good. Is she gonna die? Oh, she blocked her. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah, but she shouldn't, she, we don't want her to know that it won't. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want her to know that she's, has that ability to live. Okay, that's really bad. And you're on oil, yeah, and you're still covered in oil. Oh, she flipped it off. Mm. You're having to fight against the skill of her. Or manga art. Mm, that's good. And you're weak to that, yeah. Run, <laughs> no, Ooh, Kaiki throwback, yeah. What were you just saying though about like, it's good that life is hard, kind of, not easy? You know? We need the power buff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we lost the killing blow. Without knowing she's immortal, she. That's crazy. Oh, she got hit. And now she's gonna know her true nature more, right? I think she got hit.
thing. I think she did. Oh yeah, that's her blood stain, right? Bro, and Anoki's yapping so much. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you literally poof her that one time. Huh. God, I don't deal with it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not good. Town, new god. Achi Kuji, bro. Hey, bro. Snail beat slug. Any day of the week. Snail beat slug. Shout out. Oh my goodness. She's dangling. Yeah, Achi Kuji, Achi Kuji, Achi Kuji. Ooh, got you. That makes sense. I like that. Yeah, I figured it out. Especially in the um the playground, it makes sense, right? It's kind of a Hachikuchi locale. Oh, in the crisis of my friend, give her, give Hachikuchi a hug. Oh. Hachikuchi's such a goat, bro. Yo! That's cute. I like that. Alright. <laughs> what do we do with the Tsuki? <laughs> okay, so that's still in play, technically. It's just folded up in her backpack. Yes! That's what I was saying! So she's saying we take those. That was cool. Birds on a road is kind of a crazy visual metaphor for this show. Ooh, because she was like out of the picture. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, like she is making the situation worse when she's conscious. Yeah. Oh, you mean like... You mean like... The squad from... Way back from Kizu? Embalming? Is she a corpse? That's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, the question is, would she remember it? Or, like, did her memory get wiped when she got m killed, right? <laughs> yeah, what exactly... I don't understand that. Oh, but that means it's just bottled up, right? That's gonna still come out. Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> so now she's got like some like suppressed trauma. To... But if you heal it, she's gonna start to understand what happened. Oh. 
Interesting. <laughs> the bloody robe. Wounds of the brain. Hmm. Okay, so she's healed? Question mark? Oh, okay. That's an interesting idea. That's interesting. She's so different than Nadeko. Yeah, that is terrifying. <laughs> Surely this that's not gonna bite bite her in the booty, bro. Not telling people about it for so long. National treasure. Oh, she wanted another bite of that ice cream. It was kind of sp you bought one of each. What are you practicing? Oh, he gave you a ton. Aragi, hook her up. Yeah, put some respect on Aragi's name. She walks in again. Yeah, I have it again, bro. What is going on? The, it's it's repeating. It's repeating, just like she just said. That's actually crazy. She's like, bro. Dude, and the same on her cheek. Oh, and the eight turned into an infinity. That's nice. Oh my goodness, we're stuck in a loop. What? What is this? Is this the OP or ED? I don't know. The glaive? Yeah. This looks like an ED. The shluggy. Is that Hachi Kaji? Kamru? Kamru? Bro, this music is kind of like. Oh, whoa, is Nadeko gonna get a fit too? Why, why is Nadeko in like a fit there? Looks like she has like a medical girl thing. I haven't even been reading this stuff. Oh my goodness, there's so much going on. Oh no, she's just standing next to Onanoki. I thought she was holding something. No, she's just standing next to Onanoki. So it's gonna be like her and Nadeko keep working together to try to like deal with the repeating Tsukihi situation. That's an interesting idea. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wait, maybe this is the OP, because isn't this- Wait, this actually might be the OP, dude. It's kind of- Dude, I feel like this kind of music has never been in an OP or ED for the show before. It sounds so unique, bro. Damn, bro. They got the piece piece in the thing, bro. In the OP. Oh, that was so good, bro. I feel like t I feel like that went so fast, bro. It was longer than a normal episode. It still felt short. That's crazy, bro. Oh, what have we gotten ourselves into again, bro? Back at it again with the Mono Gallery. Oh, man. So much already happened. Um, OP is great. I love the OP. That's... It's crazy. Dude, it sounds like... Because it's Yaspi, right? Or whatever. This one shot right here was really interesting to me specifically. So this is like manga, manga work, and then oh, it's a bunch of Nadekos. <gasps> that was in the oh, that was in the trailer. I forgot about that. A bunch of Nadekos. This was in the trailer. Yeah. So, but I, I won't worry about that yet. That's probably a next episode thing. Looking at the OP more closely. I don't know. We'll just see what happens. We'll just see what happens. Dang, what a full circle. This was like a this was like a freaking a freaky Friday or not a freaky Friday, like a Groundhog Day situation a little bit with the full circle. There's so many things that I love that they did. There's so many things that are good. Um A, Tsuki, he's terrifying. I mean, we're seeing this through Onanoki's lens, sure. Um, but her like holding the match in front of her. I mean, this entire scene was so good. But she what's interesting is that 
she gives up. She burns herself and she throws the match away from Onanoki, and then Onanoki jumps into action to like deal with the match. So I, it's it's funny. Like Onanoki actually wasn't in danger. That's not the thing that like got her to act. Um, she was dealing with the the like loose flame that could have went and become a problem, right? So she was, and then she ate the match, bro. That's unhinged. That's unhinged. We need to talk about that, Onanoki. Okay, this is something you cannot be doing. You know what I mean? And then the oil slipperies. Dude, like, what is this animation, bro? Look at this shit. <laughs> like, can somebody please get this endlessly repeating? Like, like me waking up. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my goodness, the quality is just insane. I swear, Onanoki specifically, the quality really hits for. It's because she's so plasticky, right? Like, the harsh shines hit so good for her, like, character. And they do them so well. She looks like she's, like, rubber or plastic. Like, some sort of doll, really. And, and she's covered in oil, so she's shiny. Right? So even that's, like, really cooking. Um, But yeah, okay. So I really like... That That all was great. This opening scene was really good. A lot of it was stuff from the trailer. So I, I was pretty, like, you know... Which is still super fine. But, like, just throwing that out there. Um, Man, the first thing being, like, a photorealistic egg... Now that's a monogatari moment, is it not, bro? Now that's monogatari right there, man. They start with a fucking egg. <laughs> oh my god! And I love this shot. I love that shot too. But yeah, so I'm I'm starting to come around on the Tsukiki's terrifying idea there. Um, oh, the repetition element is so cool too. I what I what I like about the repetition thing. Let me just jump to the ending, I guess um about how she doesn't learn it's like a her not learning makes sense because like learning would be a change in the brain and what's the difference from like an injury and a change right because like to heal back to default is or like to heal is to go back to your default state right if you're cut the wound mends itself it goes back to what it were and so you're like you can't like if you fail and you would learn something from it your failure would be healed back to zero and there wouldn't be any scar there that would teach you anything, right? You wouldn't learn, like, you put your hand on the stove, it burns your hand, you don't have any scar anymore. So now, and so you don't learn that you shouldn't burn your hand, you'll just do it again and again and again. And like, remove is con it removes consequence, which is just crazy. So I like that idea. Um, and is it literally she cannot learn was kind of the idea? Was it, we went that far, am I correct? Um... She bear so yeah yeah right here. That's exactly why Tsuki Araragi, no matter how much time passes, lacks the ability to learn and is exhaustively repeating. No matter how much time passes, she barely manages to fail. And those failures are deposed only to those around her. Deposed? Give me a definition. Remove from office suddenly and forcefully. Testify or give evidence and oath. Question. Are questioned only to those around her? Are we using that in a question sense? Okay, who knows? Get rid of that. But yeah, um. So, man, it makes it it makes her as a character... Because she, she's always been, like, a codependent character in a sense, right? That's kind of always how, is all, how I've always interpreted her. Where, like, her... Oh, frick, let me turn my fan off. My fault. I didn't realize it was on. I was too locked in. Um, The... What was I saying? I was saying that she's codependent. Yeah, so the idea of being, like, with Karen. Where, like, she's so attached to Karen. And I think so much of her character comes about because of her attachment to Fire Sister Karen. And so, like... That, but that, and that's interesting when you parallel it with this she doesn't learn thing because then she doesn't have to learn because she's like riding on the coattails of somebody else that has learned, right? So she can kind of blend in better. But now Karen's in high school, that gaps kind of form between the two of them. And so she kind of goes back to this like stagnant state without like somebody else to kind of like ride along with, you know? And so for her to then kind of hit this like weird looping thing kind of makes sense. I can cook with that, right? Um... <laughs> she knocks over the thing and then puts her freaking sock on in my face like calm down please <laughs> thank you um but yeah so that that makes a lot of sense i i quite like that what's so cool is i i feel like that kind of that parallels nadeko in a way does it not where nadeko has gone through quite a lot with the snake god situation uh, and she's dramatically changed as a character, right? Like, every, even her character design, design with the cut bangs is a physical representation of, like, she is different now, right? 
So, like, it, it's it's kind of, like, her cut bangs are almost like a wound in, like, a crazy analogy or something, right? But it's something that proves her development, right? Shows her development. And so she's somebody who perhaps as much, if not more than, like, most, if not all characters, has changed from, like, hard things that happened to her. Whereas Tsukihi, difficult, painful things will happen to her and she won't change. She'll completely heal from it. So them two being, like, the two characters that kind of seem to be playing off of each other... Um, with Ononoki as, like, the protagonist, right? But she's kind of interfacing with both these characters. Kind of makes a lot of sense to me, like, already. You know? Um, and, like, I, like I, I kind of feel like that's a really smart use of the, their characters. You know? Um, especially with that line she says at the end. Let me grab it. Bum, 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 Nadeka with you. Wish for Shoujo. Women's Magazine. Author, Giant Panda Lover. And it's Nadeka with you. Nadeka with two Ks. <laughs> and it's just her in, like, as the protagonist of a freaking, like, bunch of boys, like, harem situation. Or not, like, harem, but, like, I forget what they're freaking called. I don't, I don't read that type of manga, okay? But, yeah, um, right here. I'm very glad that this world is not such an easy place to live in. Uh, and then there's, like, the thing of, like, she was indulged. She was candied, right? And so we get a feel of that, like, development again, where it's like, oh, she used to be, like babied in a sense right um but now she's not now she's different i mean could you say that Tsukihi's being babied right now by her like nature as a healing entity it's like she's is she it, it's like in a weird way she's like always kind of babied always kind of pampered in that way always candied because she's just doing her thing in healing right that's really interesting that's really interesting um, and they've already kind of done a little bit of work with that, which I think Onanoki was starting to understand when things were going really poorly. <laughs> um, tangent to say, I love how they, this represented Kaiki, like the more, I, I was saying that, but the ret the more retro resolution really was good for Kaiki. And then they still made use of the black space. That was really cool. Like as soon as that appeared, it's like, oh, this is Kaiki, right? That just, it just works. And then all these visual metaphors as well that fit for Kaiki. Um, but yeah, where she was like, kind of, I don't know if he was, like, repeating that information before Hachikuji, my goat, shows up. Shout out Hachikuji. Um, let me try to find it. Oh my goodness, there's already so much to yap about. <laughs> there's already so much to yap about. I mean, what she say is not too hard. Let me just grab the word hard. Um, gotta find, wait. Easy. No, she said easy. Um, it just means that the world isn't that easy a place to live in. I'm very glad that this world is not such an easy place to live in. And then she repeats it. Or, and then this is, yeah, okay. And then this is when Onanoki is like, this is a moment I understand, understood the meaning. I'm very glad that this world is not such an easy place to live in. At the root of that statement, that's right. It's it's, it's the purpose of life, so to, st so to say. An entitled life where everything goes your way, which make you lose sight of whether you're alive or simply dreaming. She's talking about Tsukihi. Tsukihi's that. She's living an entitled life because her life is always entitled to life. She doesn't die. Her life's entitled to life, bro. And so she doesn't have to work. Like, it is it is an easy place for her to live in because she can't lose. So all of this, all of what was said here is just, is Onanoki understanding Tsukihi's condition better, right? An entitled life where everything goes your way would make you lose sight of whether you're alive or simply dreaming. No matter how fortunate your life is, living with complaints and harboring discontent or easiness is not because, it's not because you're very avaracious but simply because you don't have a solid sense of purpose so living with complaints and harboring discontent or easiness is because you don't have a solid sense of purpose so we're blaming complaints discontents and uneasiness with lacking purpose um <clears throat> that's pretty goaded that's pretty goaded i quite like that um i kind of i kind of said it very sparingly during the reaction because i was trying to focus like during the actual episode um but like it's that it's that idea of um, I'll try to like expound on it where like pain isn't bad if it has purpose, right? You work out and you strain your muscles. You're ripping those muscle fibers. It hurts. You're sore, but there's purpose. You're trying to like in shape in yourself. You're trying to be bigger. You're trying to motivate yourself. You're trying to do something, right? It's intentional. It's, it has purpose behind it. Therefore, it's not bad. People aren't like, Oh, I like working out is me suffering. No, like it hurts, sure, but that's kind of the point, and it's like a good hurt, right? I feel the burn, like that type deal, right? Or like if somebody, I don't know, 
um, like getting a shot or something. It's like, oh, like there's the prick of the needle, but it's worth it. There's a purpose I'm getting, I'm getting like health, right? Or like yeah, something relevant to monogatari, like sacrificing yourself, right? Like, yeah, it hurts, but like if you're sacrificing yourself for something you care about, then you might want to do it even if it didn't hurt, right? Or like, or even if it hurt a lot, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, it hurts, but it's a good hurt because I'm doing it for a good reason. So if anything, that hurt starts to validate my sacrifice. Shout out Aragi, especially with Hanakawa way back in, I forget the name of the arc, right? One of the Hanakawa flashback arcs, right? Um, where Aragi was like the sword sheath, right? I'm kind of thinking of that scene. But it's like all of those are examples of purpose making pain not like something you would that's bad, something you would complain about, something you would have discontentment for, right? The difference is if you don't have a purpose, uh, it was simply because you don't have a solid sense of purpose in life without such discontent or reasons. That's why you seek purpose in life. Well, wait, wait, this is kind of interesting. Well, but let me finish my thought before I try to get into that. The If you have a purpose, or if you don't have a purpose, then the pain just hurts. And then it's just bad. And then it's suffering. And then you can complain about that, right? So that's, I really like that. I really like that, right? Um, the difference between pain and suffering, you know? And that's why purpose is extraordinar extraordinarily imp important. If you can make pain into your purpose, you will never be hurt. You can't be. Because pain has become your purpose. That's a lot of people like, um, think like self-flagellation, right? That type of deal. Them despisers of the body, you know? Though you could also attack that position in all sorts of ways. But there, that's kind of the, the, the rationale, the mentality behind it, you know? Um, the flagellants. But yeah, okay, wait, let me reread this. No matter how fortunate your life is, living with complaints is not because you're avaricious, which is just greedy, right? That's a word for greedy. Yeah, it's it's greedy. I checked. Um, but um. So living with complaints is not because you're greedy, but it's because you don't have a solid sense of purpose in your life without such discontent or uneasiness. So this is even going a step further, is it not? It's saying that you don't have a solid sense of purpose in your life without discontentment. That's why you seek a purpose. You seek a suitable difficulty. So discontentment, ooh, 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 ooh. Are you saying discontentment comes first and then you try to make it into purpose? That's cooking, that's cooking, right? Because you don't you don't have a solid sense of purpose without pain. So purpose requires pain. And pr because, yeah, so purpose is what makes, wait, wait, wait. Oh, this, oh, okay, the way I'm interpreting this is that purpose helps with complaining, discontentment and uneasiness but also is the spawn of discontentment and uneasiness. So it's like the cure to the ailment, but you need the ailment in order to use the cure, which is purpose. That's how I read that, right? Um, it's kind of a weird sentence. No matter how fortunate your life is, living with complaints is not because you're greedy, but simply because you don't have purpose without complaints. Living with complaints is not because you're greedy, but because you don't have purpose without complaints. So it's... Living with complaints isn't because you're greedy. It's because... You don't have purpose without pain. So the, oh, so it's like I live with pain in order to have purpose. That's why you seek a purpose in life. It's kind of a little bit of a chicken and egg thing in my head right now. Is it like I have pain, therefore I deal with the pain with purpose. That's why you seek a purpose in life. Or is it like, well, no, that sounds right to me. I kind of like that, right? So it's like I have pain and I harbor those things and it's not because I'm greedy but it's because I don't have purpose without it. And so it's requisite for purpose. Okay, yeah. So pain's requisite for purpose. That's kind of, okay, okay, that's the line, that's the line. And that's why we have purpose is because we have pain. You seek a suitable difficulty for your life. I really like this line. It's a separate thought, but I really, really, really like this line. Um, I think a lot to myself. I've said this before. I, I think a lot to myself that choosing life is choosing a brand of suffering, right? That's me in my, like, that's the despair side of me speaking, me using the word suffering. But it's like, you just, or you choose your brand of it, right? You pick your poison. Living life is picking poison, you know? You find the heavy, you find a heavy stone and you weigh it between another heavy stone and you decide which one to push up the mountain, right? Because you got to push something. So you pick the one that feels the best against your hands. That's, that's kind of the, the avenue there, you know? Shout out Sisyphus. Um, <laughs> just casually. So yeah, I really like the line of you seek a suitable difficulty for your life, which is why somebody that lives without difficulty, lives without threat, Tsukihi, would 
not be able to have purpose and would be stuck in that dream that you lost sight kind of thing, which is kind of what she seems to have manifested through the whole repetition thing. That's almost like a dream. Like her entire last experience with, with Onanoki was like a dream. It just kind of never really happened to her, you know? Um, hence it repeating because, you know, she didn't learn from it, right? So yeah, I really, really like that. That's really cooking. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, Onanoki does that pretty... Well, I say that so convincingly about someone as long since died. It's a feeling I can't comprehend. I trace over the words, but it doesn't strike a chord in my heart at all. I don't even have a heart. Though she's completely unaware. She's an immortal monster. Transfers, nestles up, a phoenix. Um, so yeah, she starts talking. Onanoki starts talking about herself for a moment here. I trace over the words, but it doesn't really strike a chord in my heart at all. That's a good line. I trace over the words. She just spit in lip service. She don't feel it. She don't feel none there. That's cooking. I quite like that. Though, is it true? I, I The thing with Onanoki is I always feel like there's a level of cope with her a little bit where like it low-key kind of does, but she just acts this way. You know what I mean? So her saying like, I don't even have a heart. It's like, well, you know, I kind of think you do and you're just coping a bit. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I like I like it. But I also try to prescribe you some level of humanity despite your doll things just because of how you are, you know? Um, and, like, you're, you know, you have an attachment to, like, Araragi, for example, right? So, and that, yeah. You're not, like, completely a logical thing. Like, like her deciding not to tell Gaian about stuff, not to, like, report to her, her superiors, that's kind of an example of her, like, not acting, like, perfectly logically, I would I would probably argue, right? Um, tell? Is that the word? Oh, for, I forget the word for, for, for that devilish big brother you know and she's calling him big brother you know it's kind of cute i mean she says that with a lot of people right i think she said big brother kaiki <laughs> did she not yeah big brother kaiki she was just flipping bef between a bunch of different stuff i love again how they this is the hexadecimal code for the um the coloring right isn't that what that is i actually don't perfectly remember yeah i think it is because yeah those are two different colors that's always just so cool i love their stylistic choices they do such cool stylistic choices in the show always have always will bro shout out monogatari okay let's look at this background a little bit anything too crazy mm. nothing nothing here jumping out at me specifically oh my goodness that scared me bro i didn't <laughs> Araragi just started sneaking in bro like you can't be jump scared me like that them doing like the pervy the pervy fake out is funny where he's like, oh, he's gonna perv on me, but he really just gives her cookies and cream, ice cream, a bunch of other ice cream and leaves. Driving in the car, driving in the car. That's that Araragi diff. Oh my goodness, her nose is growing. Like Pinocchio, her nose is growing in the back. Did you see that? I didn't notice that the first time. Look at it, it's growing. Yeah. Yeah, that's cooking. Let me let me skim her dialogue here real quick. Um, I like this line. Maybe the doll was given a soul after Big Brother poured so much affection to it. That's just funny because like low key that could happen. You know what I mean? Like that's really not that far off for oddity behavior, right? Manifesting is kind of a thing, you know. Um, hiding your identity and secretly freeloading within a family is simply the worst, and that's what you're doing. D Ooh, Birdman in the right side. She's looking at her like a pigeon. I can kill off someone like this anytime I want. I mean, that's, I can kill off someone like this anytime I want. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could hit her with your big finger, cha bam you know, but you can't perma kill her. That's like the entire point, right? But yeah, um, magical girl, charu, this is absolutely true. <laughs> if you can't say it in one sentence, say it in a hundred. <laughs> I will listen to someone's story seriously. Um, man, Tsukiki has a subconscious malice. That simply by existing draws disaster that she has to settle the score with. That's that's crazy because I kind of like Tsuki. You know, like there's a lot of I like sure, you know, I'm kind of like willing to say sure, but like the subconscious malice that draws disaster towards it, I kind of was feeling more with Araragi, Kishot, and freaking Kishot's ex you know, and how they were tied to, like, those energies that got used in the town. That's kind of how I felt about it, though, who's not, who could, who's, um, who could say that, like, Tsukihi wasn't kind of 
by being there, making that into such a problem in a way, like kind of igniting it, so to speak, to use the uh, flame analogy. Um, so like the disaster happened and th that was the mechanics of the disaster, but Tsukihi, Tsukihi being here was kind of even like part of that. Like I'm, I'm down with that, I guess. But and, and that was more of a town scale thing where Tsukihi seems to, I mean, she does say before this town gets embroiled in disaster, I have to settle the score with it. Um, but like, it's also just, at, we'll draw to disaster towards Tsukihi is the idea that, that, um, I don't know, he's thinking about, um, beware of birds is funny, right? The sign here. I quite liked that. It's like a stork. It's interesting that they're using a stork. Um, yeah. So what are we just going to write freaking Groundhog Day? Just repeat this. You know what I mean? Oh, look at this shot, bro. Like, just look at this shot. Isn't this like such a fascinating like shot? It's kind of surreal. And liminal. I thought, man, I forgot how liminal this show gets sometimes. With like its environments. It's because it's so lonely and isolated, bro. Where you don't see like people around. So you always, it always feels weird. And like kind of disconnected, you know. From the world and from things. And they, always, and they kind of have like very like plain backgrounds a lot of the time. That are always weird and yeah. Thing. What's going on in the background here? Anything? 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 No, not really. Dang, this this room is sick. I love this room. It's her nest, bro. Her nest. Or like this shot. It really feels like we're starting a magical girl show. Like, bro. Oh my goodness. This could kind of make for a thumbnail in some world. You replace the white with like something else, and then it's them two in front of it. Though the problem is that they have the glow on it on their hair. So you would need them to... Oh, you could give them a white blur behind them and their blur would look like it's like wrapping around them. Oh, I might use that for a thumbnail. Let's think. <laughs> but yeah. Did you say you egged her on, Onanoki? Oh, wait. Browse, browse, browse. Get my... Bra Thank you. One minute later, I was in a deck... Oh, wait. Oh, she went head to school. I egged her on to go to the school. And then goes to Nadeko's room to get the... The, um... The slug. The slug. Right. What did you, what'd you say about Nucleus? this yeah i really liked this shot we're in the bathroom in this shot well i think it flickers between shots right that was kind of the point yeah um but yeah so the bird was dan the bird is dancing at the center of the flame of course you will see distortion if an immortal apparition is close to the nucleus hmm this is episode three in the oroka monogatari series ah! episode one wait Wait, what? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean episode three? I just read that as if that was normal. No, this is episode one. I mean, I know you're saying it's episode one of Open Monster Season. What do you mean episode three in the Oraka Monogatari series? What does that mean? Why is it on episode three? Of, because Oraka is the name of the light novel. No? So we're on episode three of the light novel, but this is the first episode of the season? But this light novel hasn't been adapted yet. This is the first adaptation of it, right? Of Oroka. So are we, what, out of order? Oh my goodness, please don't get me out of order. Wait a second. The watch order is about to become even more of a nightmare. <laughs> oh no, light novel order is about to have a new, a new freaking twist and turn in it. Is that true? I'm very, I'm very, conf uh, I'm kind of confused about this. Because this could be a, um, a move of weird stuff going on of like out of order stuff. But I don't know if it's in, if it's, an adaptation thing or if it, it being episode three or if it's a like how the series works thing like how the book worked interesting 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 number two seven six one that's pretty crazy written by yotsuki unanoki shout out shout out unanoki roughly six months as she pleases based on the general vibe and is on not doing things she doesn't like she seems to live on a creature and seems much like a creature itself although she's an aberration hmm yeah the most interesting thing i think is this this realization like looking back whenever something happened in this town she was at the center of the, the maelstrom that's the most interesting i think point that kind of convinces me like okay i just especially me thinking back to like how ogi was messing with her right before the ogi Araragi stuff which still to me i think is the peak of this show holy crap that cooked so hard um that shit was so lit oh my goodness well, there's a lot of peaks in the show. I think, bro, I love this show, bro. I could talk about this show for so long. Do you believe me? Do you believe that I could talk about this show for so long? I think I have a lot of proof for that, for that claim.
do I not? <laughs> um, it's crazy. It's just so crazy because I wouldn't have watched it unless I was reacting to it. I, there's no way I would have, you know? But now it's just like, it's such a fascinating show. Um, why have you got a crowbar, baby? Don't call you her baby. What the? You cut it out, you. Anyways, um, give me something to analyze. Give me something to look at, please. Anything else? Man, I, there's gotta be more. Mint chocolate shaped planet, right? Cool visuals. I mean, I can talk about the visuals. The visuals are always good. Bro, Onanoki, why you got such a death glare? And still, this plastically look, the backlighting. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. And then the, ne and the deco stuff was I really liked. I liked the deco. Like this? Oh my, she got a little sushi rice ball. Bro, she got two rice balls, man. This is just such a cool, like... Oh, it's like manga paneling. Oh, I get it. It's like manga paneling, because she's a manga artist. So she, so we're seeing her life as if it were that of a manga. That's really cool. Oh my goodness, but isn't that so pleasing to the eye? And you can see, you can see here very, very noticeably the dots, the dotting on like this, on like the background here, is the same dotting the slug had, right? So that was a cool visual thing to show that it's a... um. I kind of called that out, but we can see that very specifically here, like this shading effect, right? Yeah. Ooh, but what's going to happen next in 16 with Nadeko? What is about to happen to Nadeko? Nadeko freaking... Hmm. Having to do this over and over, is that going to like... I don't know. I don't know what that's going to do. I'm very, I'm very curious what the Nadeko arc is going to look like. I don't really have a good feel for the Nadeko arc. I feel like Nadeko as a character is hard, hard for me to get a read on. Overall, like, you know, Snake God stuff, all that happened, shout out Kaiki. But I'm not really sure what the next move is with her, right? I know from the trailer that there's like a weird thing with like f four of them, if I remember right. Um, So that's a thing. But, and, and, and in the ED, we or the OP slash ED, we kind of got a feel for that as well. So that was super cool. But um, it's, again, hard to say, like, I, I'm not really sure where her arc's going, if that makes sense. So I'm excited to see that specifically. Um, <laughs> it's funny that I'm referencing uh, Nade uh, Nadeka Snake way way back. That was a really funny reference, right? Um, and the character design stuff, just so clever, right? Just so clever. Yeah. Um, where did you get the glaive from? Not gonna worry about that. Not gonna worry about that. But yeah, uh, well, in comparison to Nadeko, I feel like Tsukihi's arc makes more sense, right? I mean, it's. Will, like, I remember with the, the trailer being like, oh, is she gonna, like, figure out who she, like, her as an oddity, and that's gonna, like, cause a bunch of problems. The craziest thing is that it seems she can't learn, is what Onanoki's saying. But, like, you know, maybe that's not entirely true. I mean, sure, it, it probably is, right? I shouldn't just distrust. But, like, then what do we do, you know? Like, if she's just, she can't die, but she can't learn... Then what, we just, like, she's a leech and we just throw her onto another family? Like, that's such a, it's such a weird thing to be stuck in a loop. I mean, the entire point with the infinity loop, right? Um, that we even saw as, like, a visual thing as part of the repetition cycle, right? That whole shtick is, like, how do you even work with that in a story, you know? Oh, and it's cool to think of a phoenix as, like, a, as, like, an infinite loop, right? Like, because, like, revival... Revival doesn't, I feel like, usually associate one-to-one -one with, like, returning to zero, returning back to factory settings, but that is that's what is what happens with Tsukihi. Tsukihi reverts to, it's not that she comes back to life, it's that she completely, like, goes back, you know? Um, so it's not even just life that's forever, it's her life as is that's forever, you know? Which is a step more extreme. So, like... Oh, what are we gonna- well, actually, what is gonna happen with that, bro? I don't know, I don't know what they're gonna do, bro. Oh, no, no, do you really think we can take her out in some way? I mean, you're observing her. I mean, I'm sure Gon could figure something out, it's freaking Gon, if you, like, reported it. Um... You know what I mean? It's- it's inevitable life cycle has come into the light, if only a little bit. <laughs> and to ensure that I don't blunder again, immediately blunders. Oh, no, no, key. I need you to lock it in. <laughs> she's way too excited to eat the ice cream. Like, you're telling me, like, she's eating ice cream, bro. She's eating the gift that Araragi gave her. Like, that's, you know, that kind of human. And she got to act human. I mean, that was a point she did make, actually, to be fair. Yeah. And then what'd you say at the end? 
on Anoki. She just said part two, and then it went to the OP. Quite lacking the ability to learn. There's the infinite sign. I was looking for that. Exhaustively repeating. It's fine. Next time I won't fail, even in death. Why do I got a feeling that just isn't going to be true? You know? I mean, because I guess you can learn about... You can learn from your mistakes. But, like, what? You go back to Ned Deck will be like, draw it up again. We just run it back real quick. You pull up. You're like, all right, Hachikuchi, get on standby real quick. And then you just do it better. I mean, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I just feel like something's going to go wrong. <laughs> right? Like, I mean, it will. But I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I kind of want to look at the OP. Let's analyze the OP. Unhappy. A troubled human child. Oh my goodness. This is already overwhelming. <laughs> I've gotten three lines in and I'm already overwhelmed. I do like this artist though. Um, it was fun. I like this song. It's weird. It doesn't feel like a Monogatari song to me in a weird way. You know what I mean? It's like, I like it, but yeah, you know, it'll grow on me. As a Monogatari song. Okay, Unhappy, A Troubled Human Child. A lot of anime songs are kind of like this, or like anime-ish feeling songs, right? Like, I guess like Japanese songs, if I if I or am to be so vague. This line, Unhappy, A Troubled Human Child, I feel like so many songs are like this, where it's like a sad child, and then people will listen to me and be like, yeah, I'm a sad child, my parents hate me, I'm a failure, you know? It's not just me. I, it kind of gave me that vibe a little bit, that like musical genre vibe of the like, the like I'm pathetic vibe, which I feel like is kind of a thing in Japanese music. But maybe I'm trolled, just losing it. All right. Um, so there's stuff flicking in her face, like blue stuff. Let me see if I can catch that, bro. What am I looking at? Uh, you oh, un wait wait wait, U N un H A unhappy okay unhappy question mark and that says unlucky colors flashing behind her and just unlucky for the inhumane inhumane implying to suki be happy aim timelessly because you're alive a past that you looked away from that's fitting for uh tsukihi because she's doesn't learn from the past right that's a point a boring future too. If you don't learn from your past, you're doomed to repeat it, and it's just boring. Thoughts? Okay. That orange thing in the background looks like a phoenix. They look like birds. Oh, they look like bats, actually. A blue and an orange bat. Counseling? Oh, man. Wait, I kind of want to run this back. Does she really turn here? No, she's just, she's like, arcing off. I thought, I thought there was like extra dimension to her for a second. Loud undead. All the times and paces, places, peace, peace. There's no deco. Oh, that's Sodachi! <laughs> I love you, my darling. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited for it. Cause like she has the she has the hair now, the new hairstyle, bro. Oh, oh my goodness, is Sodachi gonna appear? Is she gonna appear? I almost just fell over. I actually almost fell over because I'm so excited, dude. I'm actually going to like, if there was one character I'd fall in love with, it'd be Hanakawa. If there was a, two characters I'd fall in love with, it'd be like Hanakawa and then Sodachi. You know what I mean? The slug. Yeah, maybe Sodachi's gonna- Is that Ogi? Oh my goodness, it's Ogi, bro. Right, like, imagine if the slug keeps happening and different characters show up to, like, help. That could be a thing. Where it's like, Hachikuji was the first one to help, but what if, like, Sodachi's there at some point, or, like, Ogi's there at some point? Though, to be fair, the, the, the slug is still folded up with Hachikuji, so maybe, actually, instead of getting Nadeko to draw a new one, Sung um, Ononoki's just gonna pull up to Hachikuji and be like, yo, pull it back out, we need to, like, do it again. Oh, Shinobu. Okay, Shinobu, you trying to get in this? Kompadu, you trying to get in this? The Newgrounds tank. Is that the Newgrounds tank or is that just a tank? That looks like the Newgrounds tank. Does it not? Is that a Newgrounds reference? There's no way that's a Newgrounds reference in freaking <laughs> Monogatari, bro. This is a cool shot. Ooh, what's going on there? There's a face in here. Is that that looks like a Nadeko face? Maybe like hands reaching out. There's a star here. There's another star up here. There's like the uh, this looks like the wires of like a trans like a wire transmitter thing that like electricity goes down. You know, like are like outside houses and shit. That it looks like that, and the wires have formed into two stars, and there's a Nadeko in there. Hmm, interesting. And there looks like a hand or something here too. Okay, not a hundred percent sure what to make of that. 
Okay, do I somehow feel like I'm fighting? Okay, yeah, and then this is Nadeko and, um, Anunnaki. I thought, I dude, I thought it was Nadeko holding a, a scepter, bro. I can't touch and... Calm down, run it back. I can't touch and don't want to touch. Myself, 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 and myself from my past. I don't want to touch myself from the past. You don't want to touch yourself, Tsukiki. From the past. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the same thing that... Same thing, right? Where it's like... Not learning from the past, right? Don't want to touch the past. I've been dead for a long time now. I fight with a transparent ghost. That sounds like dreamy almost, but okay, interesting. Deep in a childish and painful memory. Now we're getting to Nadeko though. Um, so Nadeko is the one that's deep in a childish and painful memory where Tsukihi doesn't want to deal with the past. Maybe, okay, maybe Tsukihi's not learning from the past is intentional or like subconscious or something. But maybe it's something that could be changed. Like, in some way, it's a choice Tsuki he's making as a phoenix, as opposed to being something that is strictly to her nature as a phoenix. Because here she's saying she doesn't want to learn from her past, right? She doesn't want to, like, interact with her past self, right? Um, Myself and myself and myself, 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 myself and myself. I don't want to touch myself from the past, right? I don't want to, is what she says. Which makes me think that she, like could she could learn but she's choosing not to she's choosing to flee from the idea of that from reconciling with those things and instead choosing to heal you know which is interesting and it's a huge parallel again to nadeko deep in a childish and painful memory disappointed it's gone let me get fall into the freaking schlippity schloppities oh you like that better that's ironic I am I as I am now what's transparent Ooh, I like as as I am now oh my goodness as I am is one of my favorite phrases by the way as I am is such a fun like like in general this isn't the first time I've heard like because this is a pretty common thing like like turn of speech right but as I am like because there's me and you hear it and you think like oh it's just you but when you say as I am, it's like, it, it like invites you to look at you closer and to, to really analyze you as you are, right? Because as I am to another is you as you are. And that is such, there's like a microscope put on that is so like, so much deeper than just like a surface look of somebody. It invites such depth. And I love that phrase. What's transparent? Nonsense. A label that doesn't disappear. Yes, it's basically a complex. They're they're talking to each other. Anunnaki is talking with Tsukihi here. Right? Tsukihi here, right? Um, it's basically a complex. I mean, wait, Tsukihi, here. you you seem to be possessed. The old me, that's wrapped up and won't leave. Are you talking about Nadeko? Is that you saying that? Um, like, because this looks like it looks like we got four Nadekos like trying to get on top of the new Nadeko. This looks like Nunadeka laying down, right? It looks like the shortest bangs. Um, I remember that. I remember these two very specifically. This was when she was trying to play Twister with Araragi. The one in the back is Snake, obviously. Is the first one one of these two is or the this one on the right is probably like when she in in Sengoku Snake. I don't quite know what what this one would be from that high there that higher style on the left. What was the line? You seem to be possessed. The old me that's wrapped up. It won't leave. Andetto! You say it. You say it. You tell him. You tell him. Mm, wait, okay, wait, wait. Subtitle browser. Let me let me look at these next to each other. <sighs> oh, you like that better? That's ironic. I, I am I, as I am now, what's transparent? Nonsense. A label that doesn't disappear. Yes, it's basically a complex. You seem to be possessed. The old me that's wrapped up and won't leave. A label that doesn't seem to disappear. Yes, it's basically a complex. I like that quite a lot. Because she's calling a label that doesn't disappear a complex. That's what Tsukihi's responding to Anunnaki. She's saying, yeah, that's a complex. A label that won't disappear. But for And it's interesting because Tsukihi as an entity in the way she's been like shown this episode would be someone that the label would disappear. All labels disappear, right? There can't be a label that doesn't disappear because any label you put on her she heals from right you can't really mark her you know she can't learn so it makes me think that like a label that she's like maybe well i don't know 
Or maybe the the label that doesn't disappear is something to do with her being a phoenix, because that would stay the same. That could be a label. Who could say? Either way, though, her saying it's basically a complex is an interesting line. Okay, keep going. To be alive is to keep changing. Yeah, so this is calling into question whether Tsukihi's alive as she is. A chain of you and you, to be alive is to keep changing. I, I like that. I quite like that, right? Change is living, you know? Um, to live is to fluctuate. A little bit of entropy built in. Yeah, I've heard that before, that a kind of idea of, like, to be alive, like, change is inherent in life. Um, or, like, movement kind of is part of that. Uh before and then I've, I've heard that connected to the idea of like that's why we die because we always have to change and eventually you change into death you know um and like same thing with movement in a sense though the movement thing is more of a when, when it comes to death it's like you move that's you alive you stop moving you're dead right so that's a bit different but change change being tied to death like kind of is is cool um because otherwise you would just change forever i mean you could fluctuate between different states of living forever i suppose um you know, but I've just heard that connected with death before, so that's kind of cool. Anyways, not really what's happening here. She's immortal. She's literally a phoenix. Onanoki in the background. Don't be satisfied with unhappiness. Agreed. You're a coward if you don't try to be happy. Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. True. Being happy is really hard. It's really hard to be happy. It's really hard to live a life that you're happy with, okay? If you're doing it, good job. Keep doing it. I'm proud of you, okay? You're a coward if you're not trying. It is what it is, okay? There's times when I've laid down and I've given up and said, I don't even want to try to be happy. It's not even worth my time and effort. And that was me being a coward, you know? When life gives you lemons, what do you make? You make lemonade. Uh, were you expecting something different <laughs> other than that? Dude, the slug's perspective. <laughs> Why are we jumping into the slug, bro? The slug? This slug... <laughs> This world and this world are a strange, strange fantasy. Will a demon appear next or will a snake? Why do I feel like this is actually what the slug's thinking? <laughs> Am I about to get jumped by a demon or a snake? <laughs> the story finally begins after meeting. Is it a human or monster? Tsukihi, returning to the subject at hand. Peace, peace. Oh, oh, oh. The zoom out and it's all taking this circling is happening in Tsukihi's face. And then it wish it wisps away and it's Nadeko and Onanoki. That shit clean. This is a good shot right here. Dang, Nadeko gave you the second piece. Oh my goodness, this is lit. Bro. Okay. Is there anything else I'm trying to say for this episode? Um there's a lot I could talk about, but I feel like, I feel like it would start to, it's starting to hit the point of needless yapping, and I want to cut down on needless yapping. I only want to give y'all the cream of the crop when it comes to the yap, okay? The cream of the crop. I also don't have comments on this episode, obviously, so it's a little shorter, but that's okay, because I'm sure y'all are going to leave some fire comments to respond to. I'm really excited, especially with all them anime onlys out there. That's going to be exciting, y'all. All them anime onlys, we're going to have to figure this, this out together, bro. You know? Those light novel readers don't spoil us, you know what I mean? Let us cook. Yeah, right, and the parallel between freaking, um, I'll, I'll finish with a little more, but the parallel between Tsuki and Adoragi I quite liked. Was there anything from Hachikuchi that she said that, that I wanted to, to, to see? The animation was just killer, by the way, with this. Oh, like, look at, what is going on here, man? Oh my goodness, her hair. The fire reflecting in her eyes. The way it's flickering, so the shadow along her nose is like so, move, is in such movement. She's still oily. Oiled up Nadeko, like, running. It's so cool. Oh, and I love this, the multiple hands thing. Look at this, like, ghastly after image. That is so cool. The blues and the teal. Or the pink and the teal, I mean. Dude, this shot is so good, though. I just love the shadowing. The shadowing is so beautiful. Run! She kind of looks like a doll running, does she not? Oh, and then this shot's just killer. And then now it zooms into her eye here. Oh, dude, this part where it fuzzes for a second is so good to really make that move that movement like right there, because you can see it like like that zoom. It's like a zoom blur. That zoom blur really makes this shot right. It's just like oh, you can feel that movement in. Whoa, right there. 
You can feel it. You can feel it in the pupil. Just feel it in the entire scene right there. This blur is so good, bro. It gives it such a... It just makes it give... It, it helps the movement. Oh, I love that. The reflection of the fire burning. And then Hachikuji Clutch. Right before Anodoki gets lit. Why did she change size? Onanoki literally changes size when the book closes. She grows. Why does she grow? I'm gonna just assume that wasn't that isn't important. <laughs> I'm just gonna assume. Hachikuji. Hachikuji. Why are you giving me that look? But it's not- the, Oh, because it's a piece of paper, right, that she had- In the playground! That's- Dude, 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 I- Okay, remember- Wait, that's kind of cool. Because I- And this, I think, is probably just a coincidence. But remember, I literally was talking about Hachikuji when it came to the playground, and then the paper was buried in the playground, and then Hachikuji grabs the paper, and is like, this is the real thing. So it being in the playground, kind of in a way, made it- Made it into Hachikuji's terrain. Because Hachikuji, A, child, right? Playground, boom. But also, B Koyomi Monogatari had the whole thing about the, the the playground, right, with the with the demon face on it, right, that she had seen and reported to Araragi, which is one of my favorite visual, my favorite, one of my favorite metaphors in the entire show. I think it's a brilliant metaphor. It's underrated, right? It's that kind of foreshadowed her showing up and, and saving the day a little bit, right? Getting the paper because the paper was in there. That's a, I think that's probably coincidence, but I love it, right? But you know, it also this did happen in the playground, right? In this in the park, the play this area, which is like a Hachikuji terrain, which I did bring up. So that probably isn't coincidence for Hachikuji's arrival. It all started with a piece of paper. Yeah, and so Onanoki learned this, so she so she should be able to fight it again easier. Right? Even if if um Tsukihi doesn't learn, unless there's new elements that get thrown in that throw it off, like freaking Ogi or something, right? That that come about by um, Tsuki's presence. She got trapped in the setting she constructed is really cool, actually. I really like that idea. Right? She made an illusion to try to, like, make it make sense to Tsukihi, and she got trapped in her own illusion and almost got destroyed by it. She manifested her own destruction, almost. So she had to have somebody from the outside, Hachikuji, come in and close the book. I love Hachikuji so much. I love this character so much. Look at her go. Like, what is she doing, bro? She's just freaking, like, just Hachikujiing it up. Freaking love Hachikuji. Yeah. Watch out for fires. <sighs> yeah, and then it all repeats. Hmm, is psychological stress good then? Is trauma good so we can learn from it? Nah, I hate trauma. I mean, that's the thing, bro. There, there kind of feels like... This is the last thing I'll say. I'll leave it on this note. Um, I wanted to start strong because it's the first episode. We're not going to do an hour and a half to two hours for every one of these. Okay, I know it's monogatari, but we got to, like, lock ourselves in a little bit, okay? Um, but no, the... um, it, There's kind of a... I feel like the beginning of a theme of, like... Like, it's important to, like, view the past, pain and all, suffering and all, in order to learn from it, right? There's kind of, like, some stuff like that going on. Um... Who's, who's to say where it'll develop, but that kind of feels like where it started. I've, I'm always, like, a position I don't like is the position of, like, oh, you need the bad in order to have the good. You need the darkness in order to appreciate the light. That type, I hate that. I just disagree with that entirely. I would rather have two goods than a good and a bad. I'd rather have a million goods than a million goods and a bad, right? I don't need the context of the bad to appreciate the good more, all right? The, it's literally... Like, relief is the only sensation you get from moving to bad to good. It's just the relief that the bad is over. So that's the only part. But that's not... You know what I mean? The bad still outweighs it. So, yeah. Th I, I, I don't like that idea on its own. It's a separate idea than I think what they're going for. Um, But something like Tsukihi's life where she's, like, never tested or whatever. She's, like, pampered or whatever. Kind of like... It's kind of like what, like, Nadeko said about, like, Oh, I'm glad life's not easy. You know? Um... Dang, I like this shot of Ononoki. She just looks so good, bro. 
I'm very glad that this world is not such an easy place to live in. Like, I would, like, I like the line, and I like the, that she's, like, embracing, like, a level of, like, struggle as part of, like, something she cares about for, like, purpose, you know? But if I had the choice to live in an easy world or a difficult world, I would always choose the easy world. And I think everyone should do the same. You know what I mean? I'd rather live... I would be more glad if this world was an easier place to live in because I do not worship difficulty. I do not worship pain, right? I, I don't make pain into purpose. I make pleasure into purpose and pain becomes my enemy. And so I feel pain and I don't give it any credence because I don't want to allow that into me in any form, in any shape, right? I have blasphemous. Be gone from my, my pure spirit, you know? I, 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 so like the like acceptance of pain of the, of the reality of pain is really good. Acceptance of pain is good. Worshipping of pain, giving pain a seat at the table, I don't like, personally. I disagree with that, right? I think it only should be allowed as much as is necessary in response to its reality. That's what I would say on that. So, I'm really intrigued to see where this will go specifically. You know, as Nade you know to hear it from the deco, it's really cool to see it from her character development. I like the line but I'm intrigued to see how this theme will progress. Chat, I'm gonna leave it there. There's no chat, I'm recording this. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna leave it for this one, for Awari, not this is not Awari, Monogatari, <laughs> Monogatari off and Monster Season, episode one. I'll be back next week for episode two, hopefully a little quicker, all right, tell me, I'm gonna hopefully get this out within it'll be it'll be within like 30 hours of the episode coming out next time we'll shoot for 20 we'll see what happens though of course of course of course if you like the video do like the video subscribe if you are new blah 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 comment down below if you have anything to say or join the discord and talk to me or other uh monogatari off and monster season fans there that's all in the description go down there hit the hit the socials up there's not really any socials to hit up but hit all the buttons you know how it goes i appreciate you for that of course of course of course i will be seeing you on the next episode i'm excited hope you are too i'll be seeing you then peace